Man, get around. Hold yourself back here. No retreat and no surrender. That, my friend, is beast mode law. Because by beast mode law, we will stand and fight and die. Giving our very last breath to defend what we believe in as men, which is masculinity. Hey guys, just wanted to say welcome back. I took a couple week vacation back east. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know my story, but those of you who follow me do. But if you guys have any new listeners today, I originally moved to this country uh, from an island. I moved to the city of New York. And from there, I was very quickly acclimated to <laughs> what I thought is the American way of life. So it's funny, when you come from another country, like, you know, when you're a little kid, you, you hear stories about America, and you watch it on TV, or we didn't have a TV, but we would see it on TVs and stores and things like that, right? And you, you have these dreams of America, and your parents tell you how what the, what the country's like. And so you have all of these... Um, let's say expectations or visions and then when you get here you you get the culture shock of where it really is so anyway guys I ended up coming out here to California man and that was another culture shock it's interesting in America there's different pockets of cultures right which is great it's a, a, a melting pot but the topic of the video today guys is what does it really mean to be a man and that's something I want you to really think about. And I say here, full explanation. And this is interesting. I wanted to share this with you because I was back east. And it was actually the southeast region. And this is really ties into this video today. But, you know, flew into Atlanta, Georgia, dude. And I've flown into Atlanta a few times. But let me share something with you guys. When you fly into a major hub, for those of you who travel, you can relate to what I'm saying. Those of you who don't travel... You got experience it, dude. It's a trip. But you fly to these major hubs, whether it's uh, Atlanta or it's fucking Texas or it's fucking New York or it's fucking San Francisco. I'm talking about a major hub. Dude, you got to take all these different trains and trams and modes of transportation just to get to your fucking destination gate, bro. It's a trip, bro. So here's the story, man. <coughs> An organic-centric society, dude. I've just noticed this because... Uh, when you, when you look at more and more customer service jobs, there's a lot more women that are doing customer services, and I don't want to get into a debate over they're better suited or their voices are better or their temperament. I don't really give a shit about that. I want to talk about what it means to be a man in our modern times in this gynocentric society with feminism, the hatred of men, all this stuff. Here's what it means to me, and it's based on my experiences. So, Flew into Atlanta, and I took my uh, my teenage daughter with me. She's very smart. She's grown up. She's very independent, very self assured. I'm proud of her. But then there's some things that only like a man can do, and here's why, guys. So, whenever you're in a situation where it's unknown, and you don't have a like a script or a plan to follow, this is what I learned in the military, guys. I'm gonna share this with you. And lack. Um, if there's a lack of leadership, then you, my friend, take charge and take the initiative and make a decision. And even if it's a bad decision, it's better than an action. So what that means is you make a decision, any decision based on the limited information you have available to you. And then if it's a, if it's a wrong decision, you make it right. Indecisiveness, dude, is... And um, I'm trying to be socially, politically correct here because I've been having a tendency to offend people. And I'm trying to be more enlightened, man. But it, it appears to me that indecisiveness is a sign of either estrogen, dude, or a lack of confidence, or a lack of experience, or bitch boyness. So I just noticed... Um, when you're a man, dude, what it means is that you take charge of your situation and you be responsible and accountable for whatever actions happen to you. So here's some very uh, <laughs> vivid and apropos um, examples. So we get to the fucking Atlanta, dude, 
get off the fucking plane and everything. And the airport's huge. Like I said, it's a huge hub. So it's n there's nothing clear about how to get to the rental car place, bro. And you try to follow the signs, bro. It's very confusing, bro. Like me, I like to make things simple. Like I'm a consulting guy. So for my clients, dude, when I translate technical terms into non-technical terms, I make it very fifth grader level. Or, I mean, a monkey could do it. But we're in this fucking huge hub, bro, and there's no really clear direction, and we're, like, running around lost. So my, my daughter says, hey, so where do we go? And I was like, man, I'm going to fucking ask the people who fucking work here. So I went up to a lady and says, hey, how do you get to the rental car place? Oh, you go down here, you take Transit A to the next stop, and then you got to do a Sky Tram over to the area. Then you go down the steps, whatever, so... I wasn't following all that. I was just, I tried to, bro. My brain, my fucking gorilla brain just thought it doesn't retain a lot of fucking useless information. So we, I got the first part of it. Go down to this area. So then I was confused what to do. And, and so was my daughter. So then I'm a man, dude. So I took charge of it. There was another dude there that had on a uniform. I say, bro, how did you get to the thing? Oh, you got to take this tram over there. And you go up the steps and you go across and you go down. Okay. Got to the next area. Asked the lady, how to get to the rental car place? <laughs> okay, you go across, you go down, and you go to the rental car. <coughs> what I'm trying to say, I had to ask fucking three different people. And then I had to decipher the information. And I, then I had to take action, guys. So then I get to the rental car place, dude. And I get the fucking car. And just my manly energy, like the, the lady, the rental car lady, is flirting with me. But I got to stay on point, man. So... The moral to this story is, what does it mean to be a man nowadays? Full explanation. And I don't want to get into a lot of political debates over this transgender thing or gender neutral identity thing or you got the right to choose your own gender. I'm talking to men and I don't care if you're a gay man or a straight man or I'm talking to any kind of man that's not trying to get his fucking penis and testicles snipped off and tucked up in him. Because that right there, you are rejecting your masculinity, which is your right, but we don't have anything to talk about. Because I'm not going to... If you were formerly a man and you had your fucking penis and testicles removed and then the loose skin shoved up in you to have a vagina facsimile, I'm not going up in you. It ain't that serious because you're still a fucking man. That's some weird shit, bro. But the point I'm talking about, I'm talking to the guys who are men, whether you're gay or whatever, but you still have your functioning parts. And here's why this is important, guys. Just because you have the anatomy of a penis and testicles, it makes you a man, dude. Now, what you do with that is up to you. But here's, here's, a, here's a ticker. When you have other human beings that don't have that anatomy, dude, <clears throat> they have a certain perception of life based on hormones and emotions and perceptions and media influence. And it's okay because, I mean, dude, let's just get down to the brass tacks. Some people have to be leaders and some people have to be followers. And this video is not going to sit well with a lot of people because there's there's men now that believe women should be leaders and they should be followers and women should go to work and men should stay at home and take care of the kids and women should be the breadwinners or it's okay if a woman makes more money than you and you know all these ideologies bro and I want you to know that I'm open to different ways of viewing life but what I want to share with you is there's a natural order of things there's a natural hierarchy, and I didn't invent it, dude. I'm just telling you what it is. Men, because we have the penis and the testicles, we are built to be leaders because you you penetrate things, bro. And just the very fact of penetrating things, look, you are an aggressor. In the act of sexual intercourse, you are penetrating a woman's body. So she is the receptacle, and you are the, the penetrator. And why does that make a difference, you guys might ask? Here's the difference. If you look at any porn videos, dude, 
you know, and if you have any experience with women, this is how a woman determines if you're a good lover, bro. If you can take and lead her through a sexual experience and to perform the jackhammer with your fucking hips, your buttocks, and your penis, just ramming into her powerfully, the woman will categorize you as a great lover. It's not this fucking foo-foo French shit you see on TV where you you have the best techniques and you're kissing all over her body. That's some Maybe that's some cool like foreplay shit, but I'm talking about the actual act of coitus, of intercourse. Because you are a man, dude. It is your job to lead. <clears throat> it is your job to take charge. It is your job to figure out solutions to problems. It's just the nature of the... It's just nature of your sex, bro. It's the nature of your gender. And I wanted to make this video because a lot of guys nowadays like, oh, okay, and I'm not trying to pick on Atlanta. I just went there, like before, like I said, guys, I flew through there. Sometimes I have a layover, like an hour, sometimes 45 minutes. Had to run through the airport like OJ. But I've never really just like fucking had to go through the experience of getting a rental car, bro. That's what changed things. Like it's one thing when you go to Atlanta and you got like some people picking you up, bro, this whole... Hey, how do I get to where people pick me up? Oh, you go down here and make a left, right, go upside down, flip, you there. Okay, not a big deal. But when you got to get a rental car you already paid for, dude, and then you're on a tit itinerary, dude, you're trying to get to what you got to do, right? So the whole thing is this, guys. Um, just that whole experience just let me know, like, the, the difference between the, the, um, the sexes. And so, as a man, dude, when I'm walking through Atlanta, Back to the customer service thing, dude. I'm not picking on Atlanta because I know there's some hard dudes in Atlanta. So anybody from Atlanta listening to this, I'm not saying there's not hard dudes there because there's some hard dudes. I was told certain areas not to go to by my brother who lives down there. He said, dude, they got some hard areas just as hard as New York, fucking Philly, fucking L.A. Fucking, well, they're hard. And I, I'm, I'm fucking visiting, guys. I'm not trying to experience a fucking bullet to the dome. I'm not. Dude, anyway, when I'm walking through the Atlanta airport, like, a lot of the customer service representatives were, like, flaming homosexual guys, dude. They're just flaming, dude, wearing pink, hair done all kind of ways, even had makeup on. I'm like, I'm, I don't judge people, guys, but what I'm trying to say is this. When you are a man, dude, and you have testicles and balls, whether you're a flaming homosexual or you're just gay or if you're heterosexual or you're a manly man like me, your job is to go forth and conquer. And when you're in situations that you don't know what to do, it's your job to figure it out. Even if you make a mistake, dude, it's a thing called fail forward. And I think this is very important for the younger generation. I think a lot of guys from my generation like the 60s, got it. But I think with the, when, the, when the 70s came through with the free love and the experimental drugs and Woodstock and all this fucking other stuff, guys, which is cool. I think it's cool to experiment with drugs if that's what you want to do. But you got you know, you, you to gotta have boundaries, dude. You got to, okay, this is this this one I'm trying to share with you guys. When I go to Vegas, you know, it's cool to gamble because it's just, um, you're being social. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the whole meeting women thing, but you're going with your homies they gonna want, and people go to Vegas for three reasons, man: to gamble, to see the shows, bro, and to hook up with random strangers. Hmm. <laughs> That's it, bro. And now, maybe for business purposes, you'll go for a convention or a seminar or a training, or if you compete like me, you have martial arts tournaments in Vegas. But then, the the main reason people are in Vegas is to gamble, go see the shows, and hook up with random strangers. So, you're going to gamble when you're in Vegas, man, or Reno, right? Or fucking Tahoe, man, or any other Indian reservation. But the whole thing, you got to have boundaries, guys. And so, as a man, you got to say to yourself, okay, um, let's just say, for example, when I travel, I like to travel, man. I like to have about a good, like, 2500 on me. Just because, you know, in case my credit card's not working or my debit card's not working, whatever. I got 2500 cash on me. So out of that, I'm just being honest with you guys. But out of that, I say to myself, okay, I'm going to take $100 out of my 2500 and I'm going to gamble with that. Like, I'm going to spread it around through the poker table, you know what I mean, through the slot machines, through the dice, or whatever. So out of $100, maybe I spend 30 at this table, 30 at that table, or 33 and a third, whatever you want to break it down to. But once that's gone, 
That's that's a wrap. That is a wrap. That's me being a man, um, being responsible, being self-sustained, being in charge of my destiny, right? So here it is, man. Uh, we go through these customer service situations, and the guys are are flamingly guy. That's okay. But the whole thing is this, dude. When you look at your life, the fact that you have testicles and a penis, whatever situation you are in, dude, it is your job, is your responsibility, just the way it is. You got that, you got the gender thing, bro. No, let's go to anatomy, because the people are like all this she, g, gender neutral stuff, it or them or they, or, you know, whatever they call people that don't have a sexual identity. I'm, I want to keep it down to the anatomy. Let's keep it down there. That way we don't have to get to all these fucking politics. But if you have a testicle, testicles and a penis, the fact that you have that, what it means to be a man is that you are fully self-contained. You are self-sufficient. You are an army of one, dude. And all this crap about being alpha, you know, this is what it comes down to me, dude. Like, whatever situation that I find myself in, I'm going to find a solution for it. Or... I'm going to know where to go to get a solution for it. But I'm not going to be stuck like a fucking victim. And to me, that's what it really means to be a man, too. When you find yourself in new situations you never faced before, you just got to say to yourself, how do I get to the end result which is getting out of this situation? And it's not rocket science, but it's just taking the responsibility and the culpability and the gumption to proceed forward with an action plan. And, and the whole moral of the story, guys, is in lack of leadership or direction, then you take leadership and you make a command decision because inaction is the death of masculinity. So if you get anything out of this video, guys, if you find yourself in, in new or uncertain situations or waters or whatever, then you're living a good life, bro. You got to get out and experience life. But then the whole thing is if you find yourself in uncharted territories, make a decision. Any decision is better than no decision. And even if it's wrong, self-correct like a self-correcting missile. And that, my friends, is the true meaning of being a man. And that will help you to become self-actualized. So until next time, guys. Hold yourself back. Out.